Jeremiah chapter 31. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. God is not, nor will he be, finished, eliminate the children of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword, war didn't get to them, found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. You find that rest talk about in the book of Hebrews. That rest is the millennial rest. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. So if you say God is all finished, what do you do with that everlasting love? And if God's all finished with Israel, you make God a liar. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee, Israel, 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 not Gentiles and not the church. There's no church here. You know what I was thinking today? I was studying the Bible and doing other little things. I know a, a man that, that, that taught, I've never heard it before, but the people in the Old Testament are Christians. Do you know how close that is coming to the replacement theology? Because there are no Christians except when Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ, they were called Christian because they followed the Christ. You can't follow the Christ in the Old Testament. What he's trying to do, he's trying to bring Israel into, into the church age. No. Israel is not the church and the church is not Israel. Now today there are individual Jews, Hebrews, that are saved in the body of Christ. Amen. But not corporate. We learned about Jacob's trouble. That's for Israel. That's the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No Gentiles. No church age. Period. It's all about Israel. Jacob, Jacob's trouble. Again, I will build thee, guess who? Israel. And thou shalt be built. Ezra and Nehemiah, but the millennium. O virgin of Israel. You know what a virgin is? Someone pure. Someone chaste. Someone. That's not Israel today. And God said about Israel later on. Their iniquities will I remember no more. Their sins I will cleanse. And they will be my people. I will give them a new heart. Virgin. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, music, and shalt go forth in dances of them that make merry. Millennium. Yes, also during Ezra and Nehemiah. That was short-lived. Okay, yeah, when, when Herod's temple, that was short-lived. All right. World War One prepared the land. World War Two prepared the people. That was short lived. The temples coming back under the Antichrist. That will be short lived. Took the, the the three and a half years, and the last three and a half years won't be merry. Thou shalt 
yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. Now you could do that now. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. Every day, food, vines would be grapes, raisins, and the wine. It's going to be a, more the essential crop. A crop of the millennium that's off the curse. Plentiful. There shall be a day, day, that the watchman upon Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, get up, let us go to Zion, unto the Lord our God. There's the Lord our God. He's in Zion. That's not today. That's not Ezra and Nehemiah. That's not there in the room. Jesus was there. But they crucified the millennium. For thus saith the Lord, the word of God, that cannot lie. With gladness for Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And shout among the chief of the nations, Publishly, it means put out. Praise ye and say, O Lord. You know, they're saying, O Lord, today because missiles are flying. Tr trials and tribulation and turmoil. O Lord, help us. O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. That's going to be the cry at the end of the tribulation period. That's going to be the cry of the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. God's going to answer it with Jesus Christ. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, up north, and gather them from the coast of the earth. With them, the blind and the lame, we looked at the healing last night, The women with child. Jesus said, Woe unto the women that are with child. Because the only way for that child and that mother to survive is to receive the mark. Or you got to sacrifice your life, or you got to sacrifice that child's life. And her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. There's the people that's coming with Jesus Christ, the church, and the company of angels, as we, like Moses, guided them through the wilderness until Joshua took them across the Jordan into the promised land. There is that's the process of the root of the second advent. There will be women that are pregnant, and there will be women that are ready to give birth with a great company. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way. Jordan. Wherein they shall not stumble, and they're not going to trip, they're not going to fall. It said in the wilderness, their shoes didn't wax old. Neither did their clothes. Walmart would make no profit of the children of Israel. For I am a father to Israel. So what you're saying that God will abandon his child. No, that's what Americans do. 
And when we talk about the replacement theology, we've talked about the United Nations in America last night. Well, let's look at the religions of replacement theology in America. The Mormons are founded in America. The Jehovah Witnesses are founded in America. The Seventh-day Adventists are founded in America. These are people that, that say that God's all finished with Israel. God is all done with them. And the Gentiles get the blessing of the Jew. That sounds like cursing. Sort of like cursing the United Nations does to the children of Israel. And America allows the United Nations. America allows the Mormons. America allows the Jehovah Witnesses. America allows the Seventh-day Adventists. Their constitution protects them. And their doctrine, their theology, their teachings are a curse. To the children of Israel, where God says, I am a father to Israel. And Ephraim, my firstborn, that's, that's one of the children of Joseph. Ephraim was, was, was put away in Hosea. I think it's Hosea. Ephraim's joined the house, let him alone. It, you could use, I believe it's Hosea, against the Mormons. You say, why would you do that? Because the Mormons claim to be Ephraim. The Mormons say they are Ephraim. So according to that verse, what the Mormons teach, they are the firstborn of God. And I tell you, you are filled with the doctrine of hell. And your father is of Satan, the liar. And the Mormons will go even to say that Jesus and Satan are brothers. Well, who is their mama? The Mormons believe they're of Ephraim. Poppycock. I'm trying to think now. 144,000. Dan. I'm not going to say. I know Dan's not listed. Levi and Joseph are mentioned. Uh, my, my brain's in. My bed sleep. Here. The word of the Lord. The Bible says, Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. The Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Seven day Adventists, and the Catholic Church. I didn't say Catholic Church because Catholic Church wasn't founded in America, but the Catholic Church is in America. You know, all those crusades into, you know, if you conquer Jerusalem, we'll give you the rewards of the kingdom and all that. That's to say God's all finished with the Jews. They tell the Jews and these, these idiot Christians, they go over the problem and, the, and they let the Catholics and the Arabians show them the pathways of Jesus. And this is where Jesus and that was, was Jesus. Well, the Catholic landmark, the not the biblical. No Catholic goes by the Bible. Imagine a Baptist Christian being fooled by going to the promised land and the Catholic told me this. And the, I had one man in a pastor of a church say, you know, our, our tourist, whatever he was, he was Arabian. What? And you're going to listen to that guy tell you what the Bible says in the name of Allah? In the Quran? 24 colors or maybe the 36 colors? And you're going to go over there and let the priest tell you that this is the place where Jesus was born. This is the place where Jesus... You're full of worldly crap. The Catholic Church teaches God's all done with Israel. 
the Arabians would love to have God all done with Israel. Oh, hear the word of the Lord, all nations declare it. It in the isles, I don't know what that isles is, are far off. They're far off. He that scattereth Israel, okay, God got rid of Israel, will gather him. Ezra and Nehemiah, World War I, World War II, and the second advent. And keep him. That'd be like we had, I think it was last week, this week, our little chihuahua got out of the house. She walked out. She went for a little walk. We, for our neighbors found her. And we brought her back and we get to keep her. Don't say I'm not going to give up my dog. As a shepherd does his flock. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I am the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10. We've already read about other sheep, other shepherds that left the flock, other shepherds that fed off the flock. We read about those. We talked about them with pastors. The Father will keep Israel as his child. Jesus Christ will keep them as the shepherd. And when David left his sheep to do about his father's business, I guarantee he left the sheep in the best hands he could leave those sheep in. For the Lord hath, hath redeemed Jacob, bought him. When did the Lord buy them? He bought them on the Passover night under the blood of the lamb, under the blood of the lamb that was put on the doorpost. And ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he, the devil. So who was with God the night of the Passover, the destroyer, Satan. And there's a place in the Bible where Satan is he's the one in charge of death. And people fear him. And Jesus took the keys of death and hell long after what we read in our reading. And there's one going out, you know, it wasn't the death angel. Yes, it was. Apollyon. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. You mean where the dumb of the rock is? You mean where the, where the Ishmaelites are? And shall flow together to the goodness of of the Lord. That goodness is Jesus Christ. For wheat, for wine, for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, fruitful, good smelling. I mean like the Garden of Eden. Pure, no curse without sin and they shall not sorrow any more at all there's the curse removed off the earth because the only way not to have sorrow because sorrow was put upon the woman and the sorrow was put upon the man in Genesis chapter 3 and the only time that that sorrow and that curse is removed off the earth and removed off the man and the woman is when Jesus Christ in the millennium I'm sorry to say the beginnings of the sorrows of Israel has not even yet to happen. Those sorrows will begin at mid-tribulation and it will go for at least three and a half years. 
Then shall the virgin, we already learned who that is, rejoice in the dance. Both young man and old together. So you will get old in the, in the millennium. The millennium doesn't it doesn't stop the age process. For I will turn their mourning into joy, God speaking, and will comfort them, Israel, and make their re make them rejoice from their sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priest. There's no priest today. They don't know who the priests are. There'll be priests in the tribulation period, and there'll be priests in the millennium when we, get, if we, Lord willing, get to the end of Ezekiel before the Lord comes or He takes me home. I mean, I'm in no, I'm in no hurry to go through this. Jeremiah is a great, wonderful book, and I would love that when we get to Jeremiah 52, go all the way back to chapter one again. And my people, that's not the Christians, that's not the church. So you know what you would do if you say, well, you know, there were Christians back then. You would say my people were the Christians. Slickly and wonderfully fool the people to think, you belong to the promises of Israel because they're Christians just like you where there is no cross, there's been no cross, there's no gospel. But they were all looking forward to the cross. Then why weren't they all at the cross sitting there with their long chairs waiting for the third day and the third night? Why did the high priest, the high priest, the high priest, the high priest say, you know, Pilot, we got to put men there because we know this man said three days and three nights he's going to go. We don't want his disciples to come and steal the body. All that teaching is is a roundabout replacement theology, I believe, and I could be wrong. Shall be satisfied with my goodness. Ever hear somebody say, my goodness, you ain't got no goodness. People say all the time when we're on the street ministry, and I'll hear with me or with my daughter, I'm good. And last week when we in the street ministry, if I had a nickel for every time I heard, that, I'm good. And you know what I'm going to say, there is none good but Jesus Christ. My goodness is Jesus Christ. Who is God and God is Jesus, saith the Lord. All right, we've been talking about the millennium. Look at verse 15. For thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentations, that's the next book. And bitter weeping. So you understand what lamentations are? When we get to the lamentations, that's what it is. The Bible defines itself. I wonder what modern Bible is. Rahel, that's Rachel, weeping for her children. She only had two sons. Leah's the one that had all the children. And Rachel died in childbirth of Benjamin. But Rachel was the first wife of Jacob that he served seven years. I mean, he was deceived. But in all actuality, Rachel was the wife of Jacob. He had to serve 14 years. And when he ended up with a baby boom, ended up with two extra wives. Joseph is the greatest type of Jesus Christ. Because they were not. That is quoted in the Gospels right after Herod goes and kills the babies when they're two to four years old. That's when the Magi came. We are no number of Magi came 
to Jesus when he was two or three or four. Don't believe the Catholic carols because they're so full of crap. And when they put that manger scene, they got the and they got the little baby Jesus, and they got they got the mad guy. You're wrong. You're a liar. God will hold you to your lie. But there it is. In the midst of the millennium, we see Jesus about two or three or four years old. The baby's being killed. Why? Because the Jews are going to be killed in the in tribulation period. The Catholic Church will have real Jewish blood to drink at their mass. Did it not say the woman Israel, when she, when she was about to give birth, the drag was ready to, deceit, to, to devour her child? That child is Jewish. We eat the body of Jesus and drink the blood of Jesus. And I'll tell you, that is absolutely correct. That's what our church teaches. So you eat the Jewish body and Jewish blood. Catholic Church would even go so far. Well, he's not really Jewish. See our pictures? See our marble? Our wood? Our stone? Jesus is Jewish. So the mass is bringing you to a future where the, 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 the Jews will be beheaded and the blood will be collected, eat and drink and be merry after Moses and Elijah's killed. Merry Christmas! Old Saint Nick. Because they were not. That's interesting. That They were not. Do you remember how they described Joseph to Jacob? And they're standing before Joseph. They don't know it's Joseph. And we, there's another son, Joseph, and he was not. Not what? You see, even the sons, I mean, the brothers didn't even know what happened to Joseph. They were going to kill him. Joseph was thought to be dead by Jacob. And not. They were not. That's exactly what they said about Joseph. That's what the world says about Jesus. He's not. What? He's not alive and he's not at the right hand of God. He's just a dead religion. That's what people say. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping. That's the second Advent passage. Thy eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded. See the judgment? Coming out of the, coming out of the, out of the, uh, out of the tribulation period. Even the Gentiles are rewarded for their work of helping the Jews saith the Lord, they shall come again from the land of their of the enemy. Babylon, Rome, Germany. And there is hope. Read Titus 2.13. Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. In the end, the end of the tribulation period, there is hope. You wouldn't think there, if you read the book of Revelation. You know, if chapter 19, 20, 21 were missing, you would think there would be no hope. But there is hope. Jesus gets on that horse and mounts up. Saith the Lord, that thy children, Jewish children, the one we're talking about in verse 15. The children are going to be killed as they were killed at Jesus' first advent, as they will be killed in the tribulation period, shall come again to their own border. That's their land. 
No matter what the world, what religion thinks, that land belongs to Israel. This is our land. Oh, do poo Given by God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This land is my land. Sounds kind of Jewish, doesn't it? Who says it's your land? I bet you the Native Americans would have a different opinion about it. When you robbed and stealed and murdered them for and gave them twinkets for their land, and you swindled them, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man so of that he shall also reap. I think we're starting. I think we're in the beginning as a nation. I think we're going to start paying for what we did to the Native Americans. I think Mexicans would have a great say. And this is your land. Realize the main purpose of the people that came to America, including Christopher Columbus, before the main the Mayflower and after the Mayflower. You know the main core that even the Catholic Church came over here to steal gold. And slaves. And swindled the occupants that were here. Christopher Columbus discovered America. That's a great big lie. Because the Native Americans knew where America was. The Vikings were here. Long before Christopher Columbus. And the Vikings didn't treat as what the Euro Europeans did. The Spanish and the Catholic Church came here to this nation to kill, steal, and plunder, and God ain't going to allow you to keep getting over that. And if he did, he would have to apologize to every other snake. No, he's not going to apologize. I say that over and over. God is not going to apologize. 